In this video, we're going to show an automated tool that could have built this schema for us. So rather than messing up this project, I'm going to create another new BizTalk project here. And I'm going to call it uh, PO Schema Generated. So what we want to do is create a file here that's a copy of the schema on the website. So I'm going to take this data here and just simply copy it and then take it to something like Notepad. And I'll save it in the same project. So let me get the uh, your, I mean, the path on the disk to where that project is and say save as. And I will call this a W3 sample date, PO data dot XML. If we go back here and press the show all files, and then we have our new file here, like we showed in the last video. I can include that file in the project, and then I can hide the non-related files. So now I want to build a schema from this data. So there will be one error, because this is I just recently installed this BizTalk on my machine. So I know it's going to give an error, but I want to show you this so that when you encounter it, you'll know what to do. Um, <clears throat> again, this is actually showing off of the uh, screen slightly. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm going to click Add, and then there's a button that says Add Generated Items. And then from there, these are the ways you can build a schema. So you want to click Generate Schemas, and click Add. And then how do you want to generate the schema? Well, there's three ways to do it. You can convert an old XDR schema, which is a, a format that Microsoft came up with before the official schema specification came out from the W3 org. So BizTalk, I believe 2000, 2002, used XDR schemas, and you might need to convert those to the new type of schema. A DTD is a document type definition, and this is another popular way of defining XML specifications. And the third one is XML well formed. And notice it says not loaded. That's why we're going to get the error. And so then we specify our file name here. Okay, let me, uh, I'm going to just cancel that. I'd rather copy the file name than having to find that on the disk again. So again, I'm going to click Add Generated Items. Click here. And then pick Well-Formed XML File and paste in the name of my file and click OK. Now, since it said it wasn't loaded, you're going to get this error. It says, WFX, which is kind of a funny acronym, that means well-formed XML, to XSD schema generator is not installed. Now, I don't know why in the world they don't just install this when you install the product, but they don't. Execute this so-and-so file, which is actually a VB script program, to install the so-and-so converter. So we have to make a note of this file name, Program Files, Microsoft BizTalk Server, SDK Utilities. I use this little program called Total Commander, which uh, you can get a free trial of it. It's like a $29, $39 program, and it's very useful. So like here, I've got a, uh, well, I guess that was my work computer. Usually I have a link here straight to the BizTalk directory. So here I'm going to go to Program Files, go to Microsoft BizTalk 2006, and now I can make, like add a shortcut here for that so that in the future I can jump directly here. Then we go to the SDK. Let's go back to our error message. It says SDK Utilities and then Schema Generator. So there's Utilities, there's Schema Generator, and here's the two little VB scripts. So even if you think you might ever possibly want to do a DTD, I would say go ahead and install both of these. So if you just double click on it, it runs the VB script. It actually opens a little DOS window, flash by there, and now we're set to go, I believe. So we come back here and we do the right click and again I'm going to click add generated items generate schema click and now it doesn't say not loaded like it does before did before put our file name in here and click OK this says there were some errors generated go to 
task list to view the errors. Task list may be filtered. You might need to turn off the filtering. So let's go to my task list here. And how do we turn that off? So there was an option here called add-ins and macros, and that's the error we got from the utility. So it Oh yeah, remember our data was wrong? We actually discovered this in the prior video. So we need to open this file and remember right here this exclamation point was out of place. So remember the name of this utility was called convert a well-formed XML file to a schema. And of course if the XML is not well-formed then you know it won't uh, generate properly. So I'm going to repeat the process again. and I stopped the video to go get that file name again. And there it goes. It generated the schema. It should look very close to the one, look very similar to the one we created a, a while ago in the prior video. So let's see what differences it might possibly have. Also notice what it called it here. It actually took the name of our XML file and it didn't even prompt us or anything. It just automatically assumed that we wanted to create the XSD by the same name as that. And let's see if it created a target namespace. In this case, it didn't. It left the target namespace off. And it kept the uh, purchase order there. Now, the ship to, bill to, see, it did not make any assumptions as to how many of those there could be. So even when you run this type of generator, you probably want to come in here and check the max minimum occurs so that you can specify how many build to addresses they should have and so on. Actually, the way around should be max one, minimum. Well, they have to have, no, let's make it optional. Ship two is not optional. Actually, you have, almost have to do this with every single field, like name. How many names can you have in a ship to, right? You can only have one. So you should put required, one field minimum, one field maximum. Same thing, street, one minimum, one maximum. And repeat this for every single field. Come down here to items. They did put unbounded here. So they did realize that you can have more than one item on your order. They didn't assume that we need a minimum of one. And same thing here, you want to put, well, you can only have one product name, one quantity. However, look at these optional ones like here, like ship date. So see what it did do, which is pretty smart, it detected that some of the item elements in our file, let's look at our file again here. We have a ship date on this element, on this item, no ship date on this one. But we had a comment on this item and no comment on this one. So it realized that those two fields were optional. And so right here, ship date got a minimum occurs of zero. And we will add extra knowledge that you can only have one of those. And the comment would be the same. So let's save our schema. And now let's do the whole validation thing again. So, which we did in our last video. That's why I say we do it again. We're going to take our XML file, copy it. We're going to go here to, before we do validate instance, remember we have to go to properties. So I click properties. I then choose my input name by pasting it there. Now I click on the schema and right click and say validate instance. And it looks like it validated OK. It says it succeeded. Validate is succeeded for schema so and so. So that concludes this video on how to auto generate your schemas using the utility that's available when you right click and say add generated item. Thank <laughs> you.